I'm Jack Johnson, and we're here tonight to uh, kick off our very, actually our second oh. All right, sorry. Uh, this is, uh, I'd like to first of all thank everyone for coming, and uh, I'd like to do some introductions. Uh, we have uh, uh, two county commissioners here, uh, Commissioner Netherland and Commissioner Drexler. And I would also like to uh, introduce, uh, we have staff with uh, Mason County. We have uh, uh, John Eustace, the county commissioner. We have, engineer. we, engineer, oh. <laughs> uh, I, I did that with, <laughs> my tongue's a little tight tonight. Uh, we have Dave Smith, he's a transportation engineer. We have, Al Eaton, who is the Road Operation and Maintenance Assistant Manager. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> some of our, our TIPCAP committee members, if you want to stand. Uh, Jeff and And then, uh, so, so what, what was uh, created by a resolution of the commission was to resurrect the TIPCAP committee. Uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, then we, we created, we, we created, they created nine positions. Created nine positions and, and we, we created our, uh, our mission statement and our bylaws. One of the most important things that we wanted to accomplish was we wanted to have three public meetings in, in, in uh, the beginning of the year in the, in the District 1, uh, which is Commissioner Netherlands District, District 2, which is Commissioner Shooty's District. We're going to be doing one there in April. And District 3 and Commissioner Drexler's district. We're going to do that in May, and, and get public input and inform the public on on uh, uh, the annual and the six-year transportation improvement program. So um, we 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 want to get input on road maintenance road safety, intersection safety, connectivity, all, all of, of the duties of Mason County Public Works. And so what we're going to, what we're going to go over tonight is we're going to, we're going to have a PowerPoint by Bill Wolf, and we're going to have Loretta Swanson is going to go over the transportation study uh, by SCJ for Belfair. And Alan, and then we're going to open it up for for public input, for for uh, any ideas that you may have as citizens to to give input on on uh, projects or safety projects, etc. We're going to be taking notes and taking down those, and then that will be put into the six-year tip, and then they'll get they'll get. Uh, considered and hopefully hopefully they'll get uh, they'll get uh, accomplished so with that I'm going to turn it over to Phil okay well thanks Jack and it was you know and everybody um, has contributed uh, to this presentation so let you know that we've had a little bit of help from the county and I think it's a as our committee, we want to help do uh, the groundwork, some of the groundwork and going out of the community. We want to take on a little bit of that workload and, uh, and, we, will, and we will listen to people in our district and people that have uh, various transportation concerns, whether it's freight mobility, uh, whether it's pedestrian, or uh, just going to work. So, with that, Okay, as Jack 
mentioned uh, that there's a rule that requires the county uh, to adopt uh, uh, to adopt uh, uh, a METIPCAP uh, committee to develop uh, to develop uh, a transportation improvement plan for each for uh, for, for the six year plan and then to, to, to adopt the plan every year and that includes roads, uh, safety, construction, maintenance, and also uh, trails is also part of what we do. So as Jack mentioned, uh, we have committee members. Um, uh, we have certain committee members uh, um, are actually here tonight. Uh, Jeff is here. Uh, uh, seeing Jack is, is, is also here. And, and as I mentioned, uh, we have some county commissioners. Uh, uh, Mary Jo is also here, um, and each represent, uh, see I won't bother to read this, but uh, the people here uh, represent uh, districts or a certain uh, facet of transportation. And we do have um, a vacant uh, a position we need to fill, and that's in uh, the Hoodsport area. Uh, uh, from Public Works, uh, we have Joey Hoth, uh, who's the who is the Public Works Director, John Hustis, uh, the County Engineer, uh, Loretta here tonight too as well, and uh, then Cindy, uh, with a, uh, who's a Road Maintenance Manager, and I uh, think Kathy Carell helps us out. So again, uh, we recommend uh, the six-year transport uh, uh, transportation improvement. A plan. We're here to help uh, I'm sure uh, the by you know uh, the viability of the county road program. Uh, review uh, budgets, what needs to be done. Uh, uh, Jeff Carey is on is uh, uh, his position is uh, to focus on uh, and to address uh, the urban growth areas. Uh, Belfer, Allen, and Shelton, and then Mark is well. I mean Mark is here at the Shelton. Uh, we also help uh, participate uh, in the comprehensive uh, planning updates. And, uh, and uh, most importantly, we're here uh, to listen to you, uh, to the citizens of what you need uh, from the county uh, transportation uh, system. So it's important to recognize what is a state road and what is a county road. Uh, for instance, uh, Highway 3 out in front here, I mean, that's obviously a state road. And then there's Highway 16, there's Highway 300, which runs out, uh, it ends about at the Belfort to Huya Road, then from there, it's a county road up, up from North Shore. So I know it gets kind of confusing on what is state and what is, uh, what is county. So what's listed on the slide is all the state roads. So we're blessed with lots of roads, 620 miles of roads, with that comes lots of bridges and 3,300 culverts. And all of the annual maintenance needs are required uh, to keep that big road system going. The county does 50 miles of chip seal and then uh, the HMA uh, uh, overlay, that's an asphalt overlay. That's essentially putting a new coating of asphalt over the top of the road. So as you may know, I mean, some of those culverts uh, are fish barriers uh, to either the, uh, to either the, uh, migrating salmon upstream or also uh, fry going downstream or intermodal travel in between uh, different habitats. And I mean, not only is it a good idea uh, to replace the culvert uh, for fish barrier purposes, but you know, uh, let's face it, a lot of those uh, 3,300 culverts are getting old and they're going to need to be eventually replaced anyway. So and it's very expensive uh, to repair it or uh, to fix those. So this slide, obviously, I mean, it's not intended to be read other than um, I mean, 2000, uh, that in 2018, uh, our annual construction program will be over $4 million. Yeah, then that's what it looks like. So the budget, I mean, we've really, you know, the county has really been challenged um, with the budget 
And as you can see, between 2017 and 2018, you know, it's, I mean, if you factor in inflation, fuel costs, employee costs, and everything, I mean, it's actually less than what it was in 2007. Um, so uh, the revenue is essentially flat. And, you know, again, um, uh, the inflation and, you know, uh, let's just face it, uh, that it's harder to do things now with environmental regulations and, you know, and all the processes involved in doing a project. But, you know, the county has gotten smarter in the way we've done business. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 there's actually nine less employees than what there was before. And then, you know, you know, there's been, uh, there's been service reduction. It's gone longer, you know, it's just longer as a period of time between the chip ceiling, it's longer period of time between asphalt overlay, that's, you know, there's been less money for brush control, less money for going into more rural areas or more areas, you know, such as Tim, or uh, for instance, the, I like short crust and, and other spots. There's just been less money to do things. So that um, so we want to let you know that there's plenty of ways to find out the same information that we're talking about, uh, you know, tonight, and you know, and much, you know, and much more detailed information um, is on the website you know, along with GIS and these other plans. You can also find information, you know, about Wash, uh, us about WashDOT and, uh, you know, the planning, uh, seeing future planning efforts. Just wanted to show what a typical um, a road section uh, looks like. I mean, when you will hand it to it, even with our budget reductions, you know, there's been good roads built, there's been good roads that have been rebuilt. Um, for instance, Gravy Loop Road is, is you know, is one, uh, the road out of Pickering Road, uh, Belford, Tehuy, and others, you know, have adopted more uh, a modern, safe uh, road system. So I know, um, and then this is the 2018 uh, chip seal program. So here's a map version of it. And then this is uh, the actual listed roads. So you have an idea on what's going to be chip sealed. And, you know, we may or may not know uh, what a chip seal road is, but, you know, for us old timers that have been around the community for you know, for a long time, we can remember when the Elfendahl Pass was, you know, was essentially a dirt road, and then it was chip sealed. So that's where they just, uh, so that's where you lay down rock and oil, it and you essentially build up that road base, or you chip seal over the top of an existing uh, asphalt base. But it greatly adds to the longevity of the road. It also gives you more traction on the uh, on the road itself. So. And then this is an example of uh, uh, the asphalt overlay out there at Pickering, um, uh, the chip seal, uh, uh, what chip seal looks like in Elfendahl Pass Road, and then there was an asphalt overlay on the Mason Benson Road uh, this last summer. So there's kind of more of a visual of what that looks like. So on the right is an asphalt overlay, and on the left is part of a uh, chip seal process. So I also want to give you a look at uh, some of the pedestrian projects too is though this may have, this may have seemed like or felt like that it was a state project since it was done at the same time of, of the work on Highway 3 in Belfair but uh, uh, there was a county project to put in uh, the sidewalk across uh, from the Safeway. And then there's also a bus station there, too, as well, as you know. And again, here's a project on, uh, on the Mason Benson Road. Also kind of getting back to culverts. You know, that was a culvert that was under, uh, uh, that was under uh, the North Shore Road. 
just about you know just about the start where the North Shore Road starts, and you know I don't know if anybody's been down or you know we all remember. Or if you don't know, you go to Belfair State Park, you see lots and lots of salmon going up streams there. And they were, you know, and they were forced to navigate through that culvert, and now they have a nice, uh, now they have a much easier uh, passageway. So talking a little bit about uh, future projects as well, it's going to be one uh, just right out our back door here. And that's a new sidewalk that's going to run from the QFC uh, to here. Kind of a much needed project. I know there's much interest in uh, the Belfair bypass and uh, the future road connections to the Belfair bypass. And on the screen there is a schedule, it's a current schedule of uh, when the Belfair bypass is going to start. And there'll be, uh, there's another slide here that's going to detail uh, the connections a little better. And so Romance Hill is one of the proposed uh, connections. Uh, they're more in the center. And then it shows the Belfair Bypass alignment in, in orange. So another future project of the county and of the citizens, and, 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 and as citizens, we know we need this project, is what to do with the trails road as you know, there's there's been constant work on the area. There's uh, there's a, the uh, there's been studies done to determine why it was why it's been sliding, and there's plans to dewater the slope to slow down uh, to slow down the slide. Um, also, looking at you know down the road as an alternative road. I mean, uh, we're still going to need that road, but an alternative road uh, to the trails road. which would take off from the top of that slope, essentially, and then come on uh, to Highway 3. So, Loretta, what's the update on this project here on the, um, on the Matlock Brady Road, since this was a 2018 uh, project? Our engineering and construction manager has bid documents ready to roll. Okay. Anticipating construction this season. Okay, great. And as Tip Gap committee members, um, you know we, you know we've been discussing our meeting. Uh, perhaps simple things, or you know, not very, you know, not very expensive things to do to improve uh, intersection safety. Uh, we've all seen uh, in our local areas uh, work. Uh, that WashDOT has done, uh, that Department of Transportation has done, uh, you know, to better sign, uh, to better sign these intersections, to better alert people uh, that intersections are upcoming. And, you know, as our committee member, we thought that would be a good project to undertake, is uh, to look at these. So here's, here's one, if, you know, you go out on Mason, you know, if you go out on the Mason, where Mason Lake Road and or where Mason Benson roads intersects essentially with the roads that goes down to Trails End Lake. Um, that, that, you know, it's an intersection that's not necessarily highly visible, especially when you're traveling in at night. And this is where I have to hand it to the county is, you know, I live on the Great View Loop Road, so I have a little bit of interest there, but when I heard it was gonna be chip seals, I was a little disappointed, because many, Many of you know that I'm a road bicycle enthusiast, and I thought, great, I'm going to go out on, you know, so I get to ride on a freshly chip sealed road, which is going to be rough to ride, rocks are going to be flying everywhere. But I had talked to them about not chipping shoulders, and, you know, and lo and behold, uh, they did it. I don't know if it was because of me or whatever, but I thought, you know, this is great because it really turned out nice. That road really turned out nice. They used a smaller chip. And you know they sealed it afterwards, and so this was this spring. You see the loose rock there, and then by this, you know, I mean it was a month or two later, and it was great. And, and you know, and then the shoulder was a chip, which I think does two things: is one, it's obviously less expensive, but two, it helps define what is the pedestrian area and 
what is the roadway. And it's a lot nicer to write them. So I also write, in, you know, I've also seen some other good work and maybe some things that could have been done better in the past. So again, the trails road out by Mason Lake was done maybe 12 years ago. I mean, it's a nice road service, but there's absolutely no paved shoulder. Versus, uh, here's an example in Thurston County where you have an extra wide shoulder, and again, you have that differentiation between the chip and non chip which I think helps define uh, the pedestrian path. So I'm hoping we can work on projects like that, or if we can incorporate this in other projects. And as you know, you see, you know, you may see bike riders out there, maybe they're a little bit of a pain to avoid, but they, you know, but they also come out here for a reason, right? I mean, they would rather ride on rural roads than on busier roads and, you know, in more urban areas. So there's a reason why they come out here sometimes to ride out on narrow roads, is they'd rather do that there than on really busy roads. And so there's several bike rides that are organized here. One is, you know, out by Mason Lake, and they have four or five races out there um, of about you know 230 participants at each race, and they you know you may see them coming out here with their with their road bikes on the roof racks. And I just was looking at the average speed last night, you know, or last night, 27 miles an hour, average speed at that race. That's pretty impressive, um, and you know it's a pretty flat course, but. You know, I'm, you, 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 you know, you know, again, another reason why they came out, why people come out here to enjoy our roads. And our roads really matter. I mean, it's our, you know, it's not only transportation, but it's a look and feel of our community. It's how we get around. It's, 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 you know, I mean, really, it's a billboard of our community. You know, our roads are very important. So, with that, I'll open it up. Any questions? Thank you, Phil. Um, Loretta is going to talk about the Belfair and Allen circulation plan, and also want to really thank the voice for for helping uh, sponsor this and the chamber. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, this is. This is all just kind of getting started, these public meetings, and I hope that you'll stick with us as we get better and better and better. And I know that I know that uh, we have some really good people on on the uh, TIPCAP committee, and we really enjoy working with Mason County. They're, they're such a great uh, team. They, they, Loretta does a wonderful job, and uh, a lot of help with, with even uh, Kathy doing the, the the minutes and it's just a really good productive uh, committee and uh, uh, you're you know we, we welcome public input at our meetings they're the uh, second Wednesday of every month and and uh, uh, I think that we're really on on a on a onto uh, a good track what we're trying to do with these public meetings and we're, we're really trying to make them uh, better and better and we're doing uh, with volunteers what Kitsap County does with with staff. They have about five public meetings like this per year in various uh, rural areas and, and take input and they do that with their staff. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to do that as a committee. And, and I also wanna, I, I wanna uh, thank Jeff and Phil for all the hard work they put into this PowerPoint presentation because they, it, I see the emails going back and forth and and I, I sometimes don't even read the emails they're they're uh, so I'm kind of guilty of that but they they've been they've been working so hard on this and 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 you know we 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 all are busy in our lives and schedule and 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 it's really it's really uh, these guys it says a lot about people when they volunteer like this so. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Loretta so she can talk about the circulation. Uh, and I'm going to talk really quickly because you all have taken the time to come out tonight and um, share some of your observations. And so we want to make sure that we've got good time to hear your comments, questions, and share with you your share with us your ideas for transportation improvements. 
So thank you for coming out tonight. Um, a little bit about the Allen Circulation Plan. How many folks here are from the Allen community? About half? <laughs> okay. Um, are you aware of the Allen's plan that was put together last year? Familiar with that? Okay. So we did have a plan. Let me back up first. What's everybody, what's important about a plan? Planning, planning, planning. Well, plans lead to projects, and that's what um, kind of the first step. So much as we like to kick plans around and not like plans, they're very important and do lead to projects. So in Allen, we identified, we went out to the community um, with the help of a consultant, SCJ Alliance, and we had a, um, an issues and opportunities workshop in March of last year, and we were grateful to have the Allen Community Association host that workshop. Our consultant had several interviews with stakeholders in the community, and then the Port of Allen hosted a, an outreach meeting then in May to share some preliminary findings and get input from the community at that time as well. All of that rolled into a plan and the plan had recommendations on transportation improvements to be made in the Allen area. And I have some um, copies there on the table, and I see they disappeared, so thank you for, for picking those up. Um, the upshot of the recommendations were to basically three primary recommendations. One was to look at SR3 as a complete street or more of a, a community street. So rather than treating SR3 as a state highway running through um, the Allen community, it was, there were recommendations to design the state highway to be more inviting and welcoming to Allen and more pedestrian friendly and slower speeds and basically show that Allen is a community. Um, the second main recommendation that came out of the report was to secure access for local connections within the community. So the Allen has what's called unopened rights of way or streets that need to be streets basically. And so there were recommendations to improve wheel right way in Masterson to improve the circulation and connections within the community. And then finally, there were recommendations about parking because there are some vibrant things going on in Allen and it's hard to access and enjoy what's happening in Allen without good parking. So there's a lot more detail, but um, and I'm happy to point you to the plan or share the plan with you. Um, but that's kind of the gist of that work. And then the second work that's happening right now and is still ongoing and should wrap up here in another three or four months is the Belfair Mobility Plan. And there is a website, and I'm not sure, have any of you visited the Belfair Mobility <coughs> website? Herb? No? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're advertising in the wrong places, obviously. Well, you need to set up URLs. All right. So there is a, a welfare mobility planning effort underway, and I believe, oh gosh, I can't remember. It's been a while. We had a meeting right here in the hub a while back with our consultants on that to kind of kick the process off. And they've been busy talking with stakeholders. They've been out having the informal meetings, talking about connections and biking and where you're walking to here in the community. And also thinking about with the new SR, or the freight corridor, or the Belfair bypass, as you're familiar with, what are the important connections that need to happen up to the bypass? And so they're about ready to unveil their preliminary findings. And so look for a big meeting in about three weeks or so back here in Belfair 
to share specifically what we're finding um, in your community about transportation. So that's coming up here soon, and that's a, a pretty important meeting, and I hope you'll be able to attend that. Um, Dave Smith, wherever Dave, where'd Dave go? Hiding right there. <laughs> Dave is um, the project manager. So he works really closely with our consultant on this project. And later, if you've got some specific questions, I know Dave will be able to answer that for you. And with that, I think we'll turn it into the, the question and answer portion. And I'm, I've got a scribble sheet here. So I'll let um, Bill and Jack facilitate questions, or Jeff. And I'll be the note taker and scribe. And, and get all of your um, good comments down. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta. Um, I was on Mason County's website today and went into the home, went into committees, go into TipTap, and I see that we are uh, lacking quite a few things so uh, what we're what, what I'm going to try to do here very soon is to to post onto there our bylaws our mission statement but also the Allen uh, transportation plan the Belfort transportation plan so you should be able to just go right on to that and and go into and click on it and open it up so uh, give us a little bit of time and we'll catch up I noticed that we're behind on some of the agendas and we'll work harder on that. So with that, um, also, I uh, I don't know how well I explained it. I started off pretty bad and I'm still not doing really good, but uh, <laughs> we're, we, we as, we are planning for the annual and the six year tap. So, uh, so we, we're planning out six years, basically. That's what we're taking in information for. And, and, and so what, what, we, what, what we are um, trying to do now is Jeff's going to help me, and we're just going to take down, we'd like to know if you could tell us your name. It, not mandatory, but if you could tell us your name. And, and any safety related, transportation related, maintenance related, uh, we have we have really all the powers to be here tonight. Uh, we have maintenance, we have the commission, we have engineering, we have everybody here. So if we could just get your input on any ideas, concerns, uh, uh, it, I don't want to limit it even to state highway. We don't we, if, because there's so many there's so many things where this the county road interfaces with a state highway and and so as a committee as a county I believe we need to figure out how to interact with the state to get things done as well. So uh, what we want to do is we want to take in barely District 1, and, and a lot of the information that we presented tonight has to do with District 1, and when we go into District 2, we'll try to present what is specific to District 2, but we'd like to get your ideas on, on, uh, uh, on transportation issues. So, Jeff, if you want to just stand up, I'm, I got my notebook pad, and we'll... I said, I said. And and we can just start we can start going uh, we can just start going through. It looks like you're having a change of operation. She's recording. If you're recording, I don't need to record. I can have a mic. That works great. Right? Oh yeah. Because she's gonna. So we're gonna have her record. Okay. Yeah. Long there, dude. Thank you. Okay. With that, gracious. <laughs> Handover. Um, closer there? Perfect. Uh, let's start with questions. Uh, Razor Road Connector. Okay, I heard about that recently. I think that's a real crucial one. 
want to try to try and move up up the line to get it done for several reasons. One is the bypass. Allen is always going to be hung up. I mean, you can't really get the traffic through, through Allen no matter what you do unless you take down some houses. If you do the Razor Road one and you do it right, you got the back way in, in to Shelton. Uh, and it doesn't take, it's not that much of a connector to make it to hit that Trails End Road. And uh, I think you need to move that up for safety reasons too when that hill goes, fire departments can't get up there. And just so everyone knows, the Razor Road connection is confusing because there's a Razor, there's a Razor, the Razor Road connection is a little bit confusing because there's a Razor Road off 106, and the one that I think we are all talking about is the Razor Road connection from up by PUD3 down the power lines and connecting to that that Razor Road by coming off Trails End, and that's a, that's just an awesome road that just dead ends and just just needs to be connected. I, I agree. Yes, yeah, yeah. Are you talking about him or me? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. we live at Trails anyway. Um, going on 14 years. When we moved here, we wondered uh, the trails, trails Road and Mason Lake Road are beautiful, wide, nice shoulders well maintained all the way from Trails End Lake to Highway 3 in Shelton. But going the other way toward Highway 6, there are no shoulders. It's narrow. Why does it end there? What, what stopped the construction on that road? And as long as we live there, it's never changed. It's very well maintained from there to Shelton and from there to Belfair, it's not. I want to make sure I understand. So from Trails Road, Trails Road down to 106. Is it, it's, it's narrow, it's windy, it's, there are no shoulders. It's dangerous. And it's sliding down. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's sliding into the belt. Yes. We need to know that. Yep. I, my question is, why has it never had shoulders like the rest of the Trails Road does? Okay. Slides down the hill. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Um, we did recently look at a section, the next section of Trails Road for a grant application and we were looking at it to compare with others um, in terms of scoring. So we only submit applications that we know we will score well and the application that we did submit scored higher than Trails Road, but it is definitely on our mind as well um, for future improvements. Not only for the slide section, but also for continuing widening down to 106. Yeah, it, it but thank you for your observations, and it's good to hear that that's important to you as well. I, I, what I'm hearing is, though, is is the from Trails End to 106. That's Trails Road. Uh, you'd like to see improvements. And that's that's why we're here tonight. So it needs, we'll. So it needs some shoulders. And so, there are all, all those bicyclers that you were talking about that run yeah. around Mason Lake come up Trail Road to get there. Right. And that's you know, there are no shoulders. Right. And so what 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 we'll be doing is then we'll be putting it on the list to try to get it on the six year tip of that stretch of road. Yeah. So we don't know that that's going to get on the list, but that's that's what. This is why we're here, and we'll try to get it on that list. If we can get it on the six-year tip, then we can maybe get it to the annual, get it grants and funding. You know, it's all based on a lot of different things, but that's that's kind of what these ideas are going to, how they start this process. Which I want to decide. Um, Joe Morris, um, real uh, Razor Road. It's just 500 feet off these tra uh, trails. And it does go a good way, shoulder, straight, bank curves, it stops. If you're looking for something that should score well, I would 
Probably one of the most <coughs> biggest safety concerns I have is this four-way intersection up here with Highway 300. Two legs of it are uh, the Old Belfer Highway and Clifton Lane, which are county roads. That uh, I did some research, and the level of service on that four-way intersection is a level F. Uh, that's failing, and it fails every evening. So I think that's one that we really need to focus our attention on. Uh, another thing I'd like to throw out is a, an alternative mode of transportation is utilizing the U.S. Navy Railroad uh, as a, another form of transportation to get some of the commuters into the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and other points in Bremerton. Uh, that, that could easily be converted, it's not used that much, it could be converted to a rail line. Uh, and you could put transportation stops all the way along the rail line, all the way down to Shell. Uh, so just just have those things to throw out. Thank you. I was going to say the same thing about the four-way stop. That is, that's the accident we happen every day. Um, when they put the bypass in the, the offshoots, you know, to come down, you mentioned Romance Hill. And I don't know if you have the answer to this or not, but are they considering some kind of signal to get in and get onto Romance Hill or out, out to Highway 3? Because right now, I live up Romance Hill, and I know at least three of our neighbors have gotten T-boned trying to get there. and. With the center lane, it's nice that we have a little safety place, but still trying to turn left onto Romance Hill going south is crazy. <laughs> you can wait forever if it wasn't for the nice people stopping and letting you go. You know, and you've got the hospital there. This weekend I saw some lady rushing with a little baby trying to get people to stop so she could turn left to get into the hospital because she had a sick baby in the car. So it's like, what are they going to do? I know when they built the hospital, I called the county and I said, are you guys going to do something, you know, to help us with the ingress and egress? So that's my question. And at least uh, partially the answer, which is a you know, complete answer, uh, that should be in the uh, SCJ when they're reviewing that whole thing at the looking at multiple possible to get that connection with uh, the Belfort Bypass. Great, why get uh, live up on top of 
Romance Hill also. And the uh, bypass was a proposal to move traffic on Highway 3 from, say, Gorse through to Shelton, or at least uh, South uh, County. If a bypass by name is to bypass something, why are we trying to have an intersection and an access on, uh, I'm not quite sure if Romance Hill, as it sits today, is even to the standards required. Now, I don't know exactly what the, uh, what the degree of uh, angle, let's put it that way, so, uh, is required. I used to, used to think it was 7% or something like that. Someone told me not too long ago that it was a higher number than that. I'm not sure. But you, so all you need to do is take a four-foot level out there, and for every quarter inch, you can, you can determine what the angle of the angle is. It's also probably one of the most unsafe roads uh, that you can imagine it's, uh, that's in the county as far as I drive on anyhow, which is out this way and, and that way with Lake Floor, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> there are two areas uh, on a frosty morning, and I don't care if you've got your, your poured liquid de-icer on it or you've uh, plowed it with uh, uh, the uh, uh, Allen's uh, Pushers, whatever you call them, sanders, etc. Uh, there are still two areas. Uh, one right below my house. I look down on it. I make signs up, I guess, so I can get a score of zero to ten on how good the accident is going to be. But uh, right below my house, uh, which is the major corner as you go up the hill, and then just the the last corner as you come down into uh, <clears throat> Highway Three, uh, are completely shaded for most of the day. And uh, if, if you think that's a good access road for people that are unknown travelers on a highway that are gonna try and sit down there, we all sat through a March 7th meeting similar to this. <clears throat> and uh, and there, there just seems to be a lack of forethought in a lot of the situations that are being imposed, and they seem to be more intent on what we're going to do with the surrounding land as opposed to what is appropriate for the community. And I think we've lost sight in some cases of our community efforts. I know at one time, relative to sewer and how to get out of the sewer mess, I know some people that were on the committee, and it, it did become a community I of viewing the problem, not a, uh, not a proprietary or, uh, or what's in it for me. I, I would like to see those people kind of go back to a community eye again and uh, think of what really is best for the community. Um, the other thing is uh, in that March 7th meeting that we talked about, uh, and a lot of the people that were here attended that, <coughs> I came away <coughs> with the feeling that for 40 people that take a interchange, we're going to put in a uh, park and ride. And I say 40 because the lady that gave the initial pitch said there were four bus loads coming from the Mason County area into PSNS, three of which came out of Shelton area, one here. There were two or three people that mentioned how many cars they've seen, and all you have to do is go down here and park uh, below the uh, washer mat and stuff. Count the cars in there. You're lucky if you get 25 to 30 cars in there on a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> the numbers that they gave us as far as traffic rates, et cetera, were erroneous. The presentation that was given at the last meeting were erroneous. Again, I asked the question, why in the first place. Within a matter of two to three years, if the bypass does actually get going, up the road, within a mile, it's going to be another roundabout or something, intersection of some kind. Why we need to put a park and ride 
at the top of the hill here, except again, looking at it from <clears throat> non-community eyes, okay, if you look at it from community eyes, you'll say, why are we putting a roundabout here? Because when you came out of the September or the March 7th meeting, you came out of a meeting that said, hey, we're going to put a roundabout in. I don't care all the other pictures that were spread around the hall were, were, were really of no value at all. It was the roundabout that everyone was going for. <clears throat> so my question is, why do we want a roundabout at the top of the hill, and then a mile later on, two years later, put another roundabout in to take care of Lake Florida. Why don't we wait? Just because we have free money to put something in doesn't mean we have to spend it, number one. Number two, it's not free. It's my money. It's your money. It's not free, guys. How you, how you acquired it may be no immediate detriment to your pocket, but, but my God, it's not free money for people. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, what I'm saying is, why are we trying to put a roundabout to take care of Long Yard Road for 40 people that may ride a bus to PSNS and a mile to a mile and a half up the road when they do put the bypass in, why don't they put the park and ride up there, take care of the intersection, take care of a place to put the park and ride, call it a day and move on down the road. I'm done. Good job. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Earl Eddings, and I've been sitting quietly for the last year since I was at this review committee of the actual location for the park and ride, and how that analysis actually took place, which, through to this day, I still don't know how it really did take place, so let me just leave it at that. However, moving forward with the analysis of the intersection control analysis that's currently taking place by MTA, I'm going to come back to that because that is going to be my, my strongest key point that I want to identify with real knowledge that has been in discovery with the private landowners, and we're going to come forward and kind of explain what's going to take place now that we've actually outreached to be contacted instead of actually being bypassed by your actual consultants. But first, I want to actually talk about a major improvement project that I think really has some real core values that we all seem to overlook, except for when the rain is coming down and the beavers are out in force on North Shore Road and SR 300. That intersection, that Sand Hill Road, and that blind corner coming around the, uh, the, the substation with the way that the road is currently placed let me just give a little background here. I've never seen so many people in the nighttime wearing black clothes walking down North Shore Road with no shoulder, no lights, yep. or no trail. There's already been one fatality that I know in the last six or seven years there near Larson Lake Road. And I know I understand that a lot of this is a state highway, but I do believe that the citizens of Mason County and Tipcap have the responsibility to work in conjunction with the landowners, the taxpayers, and even our little kids that go up Sand Hill Road, of which my daughter was an accident by a bus when they actually got rear-ended because of the water that was flowing over the road. That is a sensitive issue that I really would like to see a hot topic, whether trails built, moving the road, or doing something to elevate the road so we don't have a flood situation everywhere. But that was my minor uh, discussion for Highway 300. The, the largest discussion that I really want to identify here is <clears throat> the proposed roundabout at the meeting we had March 7th. That decision appeared to already be made. Yeah. However, with further discovery, Wazdot apparently had been informed, but the senior engineer for the Olympic region had no idea that the meeting was actually taking place until after the meeting was over. So where's the transparency with the alliance? The landowners up here, SJ, SCJ Alliance, and Mason Tra Transit Authority, whoever it may be. Some of the biggest control factors that I want to identify here is I feel that I still haven't seen true and accurate knowledge for an intersection through a major arterial with speed limits in excess of 50 miles an hour with heavy, heavy commercial truck traffic. 
traffic. You've given me a roundabout scenario in a residential street with very low impact of commercial vehicles with side streets of 35 miles an hour and commuter traffic of less than 2,000, 2,000 vehicle trips per day. That's the analyst and the model that was presented at our March 7th meeting. However, I ask yourself, cities such as Maple Valley, Covington, Renton, Issaquah, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars doing these exact same reviews. And is there one roundabout on State Route 169, the Maple Valley Freeway? Not one. And the analyst has proven, maybe the, maybe the knowledge has changed the last five years, but prior to the last five years, the, the, the professionals have shown that roundabouts on major arterial roads, with speed limits in excess of 50 miles an hour, and heavy truck traffic don't work. So the question I have is why is a presentation being presented at Log Yard Road when there's never been a truck analysis done for Log Yard Road? Log Yard Road is 99.9% .9 truck traffic. The majority of the landowners have never even been contacted until recently. All the landowners, except for a few that we have not been successful in contacting, are as follows. Share trucking and landscaping. Share brothers. Peninsula topsoil with the Johnson family. Continental Floral has not yet responded, but the previous owners of Continental Floral, Brad and Angel Showers, have also supported. Cooper Fuel, Kurtz Precast, and myself are not in support of a roundabout because our businesses specifically focus on heavy truck traffic. We have not seen a model that safely analyzes the use that's going to be taking place with the 20,000 plus cars is the true actual model that's being used through that intersection today when we were told it was about 7,000. Yeah. So their 2020 speculation is already three times under what it is today. So I would like to see some additional uh, county involvement going through and actually talking to the landowners that these projects are also going to impede and also change. One of the biggest things that I could see happening here as well is if this intersection doesn't work, and it is a roundabout, the bypass moves a mile away, all the commuting businesses that are in North Mason right now are going to actually be devalued, and businesses and jobs are probably going to move closer to the bypass, which is now in Kitsap County. So there's a lot to think about here for the local businesses, the community, and you know the life safety factor, number one. But have we actually been given a true life safety factor on a roundabout, on a state highway, with 50 mile an hour speed limits, with heavy truck traffic. I don't think there has been a study done on that yet. So are we going to be the guinea pig? Or are we going to follow what the other cities have already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to do? So that's my point. Chris Bussman, and I think there's two things that with the road widening project uh, came in effect that kind of hurt our traffic. One is, well, the widening and the sewers were underway. People got really used to letting every other car in at the Dairy Queen intersection, uh, which was awesome and great and polite, but it also stops traffic at that stoplight every single day for hours. Um, and you'll be sitting there with a green light with nowhere to go. Um, and you'll realize that if you get about 200 feet further, like by the Key Bank, um, there's no more traffic. So it is, I think that that place would be uh, a, a bright point to put another stoplight in and time them so you can get through both. You don't get stopped at both. Um, and then it would hold traffic appropriately on State Route 300, that intersects with State Route 3, uh, right there and then they can all go at once, like regular traffic intersection should be on the highway. Um, another one that does that, which uh, is unique, is you go through town, even if you make it through the green light and you don't get stopped at Dairy Queen, um, all of a sudden as you pass the cop station and you pass that whole section down past the school, you got great no traffic. I mean, you're consistently driving, not the way on the turn lane. It makes it simple enough for people to enter the turn lane to move so you don't have that back up. But our South Shore and Highway 3 intersection um, gives great priority to people coming to the intersection from South Shore. In fact, most of the time it sees your car coming before you hit the corner and you get a green light without stopping, which 
takes the priority away from the southbound traffic on Highway 3, and once again, you get an additional backup, which does back people up all the way up to that dangerous corner there, um, where Hanks used to be, you know, where the coffee shop is there, and uh, the new restaurant, the restaurant there. Uh. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, JR, skip my brain. But, uh, it's unique that um, South Shore, as they approach that intersection, it gives great priority to that rather than the southbound and northbound traffic. And um, I live right in that area and I see all the time, just as soon as a car hits that stoplight, everyone's red and they have a chance to go without really having to wait. That backs up in our real high traffic times. So I think that those two thoughts would help our mobility through Belfair is uh, to better time that light so that Highway 3 is to push more traffic through during our busy times and uh, then potentially a timed light that matches the other intersection at um, you know, Taco Bell and that, that way with the Dairy Queen intersection. Chris, I don't mean to uh, bring it up if you don't, You're okay. if you don't have, uh, but you, you came up with the idea up at North Mason High School too, and I, yeah. I know that it's not a county road, but I thought that was a great idea, and I thought maybe you could share it with everyone. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, we have kids that go to the middle school now, and one of the, I think, unintended consequences of moving, uh, building our new high school on the new parking lot with that campus is that you move all the student drivers up to that um, access point at the bus garage rather than coming off of Victor Cutoff Road to enter Highway 3 when they enter school. Um, with that, you, you put a lot of traffic at that main intersection where the schools, the uh, high school road meets uh, Highway 3. Um, and I witnessed personally probably 10 or more near T-bones with students leaving that intersection and getting onto the highway um, with the traffic that's going northbound. So uh, what you have a tendency is that a vehicle will be going northbound, they'll slow in order to turn in, like to go pick up students from the high school or the middle school. Um, and then the traffic right behind them is continuing at full speed. Uh, and student drivers typically will be pulling out to try and get the turn lane, either going northbound or crossing in order to go southbound. Um, and there's a lot of near misses right in that area. Uh, I think either the option of uh, a kind of U-turn route or get back on going into the middle school that's been rebuilt, or a shoulder um, slowdown off-ramp from the highway will pull that traffic off earlier so that um, so that those vehicles can slow down. You can see the car right behind it. It'll give you a little bit more time for that intersection. My big worry is that every year you're going to have the same problem because they're newer drivers every single year. It's not something that someone's just going to get used to. Um, you're going to have a, a new class of people every single year that are learning to get their license and, and may not recognize that that vehicle is still traveling. The second vehicle is always traveling at full speed down that highway. So I think that would be an intersection to look at as far as safety. Chris? Well, yeah? You're okay. I'll probably need to follow up with you about that and catch details again. I'm not quite sure about sure. some things. So. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Thank I'd love you. To, yeah. <laughs> Well, and intersection safety is one of the things that I, it's kind of a pet of mine. And when Earl talked about the intersection of Sand Hill Road and North Shore Road, if you come down there uh, and you're on Sand Hill Road and you're entering North Shore Road, you really can't tell whether the the <coughs> the uh, would be westbound lane is 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 going to be in that turn pocket. So you could literally be turning into what you think is an acceleration lane and hit someone head on. And I just think it's, you know, and here we have a school up the hill and here we have a school that, you know, that, that uh, by North Mason High School and, and if we can save one life or we can save one accident or a broken back or anything, uh, that's with some signage or rerouting, I think, you know, that's, that's the best way of spending money, in my opinion. And so, uh, those are the kind of ideas I think that we really, uh, one of the, some of the ideas we really hope to hear. Gentlemen, there. Yes. Um, my name is Dan Dubiak, and um, the uh, address the same concern about people stopping to let people in by the Dairy Queen intersection. An inexpensive, I think an inexpensive 
solution would be a no left turn sign from three to six or something like that, so that people aren't wait, uh, letting people in to turn left on the old Belfair Highway. There's a traffic light a couple hundred yards down the street. Let them use the traffic light. And uh, yeah, coming through Belfair, you know, uh, especially on a holiday weekend, anybody that everybody knows what that's like, you know. I mean, I've been stuck in traffic all the way to the airport on Memorial Weekend, and you know, so and a lot of that is where people stop to let them in, you know. Are you talking about like the left hand turn to go northbound? Yeah, from uh, yeah, when you're going uh, northbound on Highway Three, no left turn at the used car lot or the Dairy Queen over there. That solves about half of the problem, you know. And then maybe a trooper over there to uh, for a little while to to tell people, hey, you decided to come here on the uh, on the old Belfair Highway instead of using the light. The, the people that are coming through that use the light, they get to go. And then after they're gone, then let them go. I noticed the sheriff has been told the cell phone. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, uh, I agree with this gentleman that, uh, that right there at the Dairy Queen, um, it's just the, oh, be my guest, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree with that, man. And I would also add that the, um, there's an exit at the Safeway um, by Starbucks that should be closed off to no left turns. No left turns on the um, Clifton Line. And, and what? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, and no left Taco turns Bell. into Taco Bell. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Back what Chris was talking about with the school, you know, when you're coming northbound from Allen and you want to turn right on the Victor Cutoff Road, it's a blind corner. Those people are going 50 miles an hour, and that's a real, it's almost a switchback to turn right on, on the old, the Victor Cutoff Road. I hold my breath every time. So something should be done with that right hand turn on Highway 3 on Victor Cutoff Road. It's really dangerous. I think that's becoming part of the terminus issue with the uh, upper bypass. The south. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Uh, just to jump on this bandwagon, there's actually there's actually two uh, left turn back to back uh, that that causes confusion because after coming, if you're going to turn into uh, say into the uh, uh, Pope Center there, okay, and and 50 feet down the road is the actual turn in that you're talking about, and, and, and so they're they're right back to back, and I I don't want to say block one off or anything, so you're talking, but at the you're same token, I don't want anyone to lose sight that there are two left turns that are causing problems there. Yes. So, so you're talking about the one onto the highway, and you're also talking about There's the one that goes on to, I don't know what the name of the damn Street. It's Belfair Street. One that goes into Belfair Street. Belfair Street. Belfair Street that goes in, and then you get into the Pope Center, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. And then, then there's the one that's 50 feet past that, that, that comes up the hill, and well, that's a weird angle, the angle, anyhow. But anyhow, then there's that intersection. But there's two of them. Right. Good idea that you don't want to lose track of them. Either safety or new problems. Or <laughs> uh, the limited site with the, with the creation of the widening project uh, on Roselle Road. You go make a left turn off Roselle Road. You got the big fat telephone pole and the black fence. You cannot see it until you're out in the middle of the road. Okay. And same thing too at the uh, North Precinct. Coming out of that highway, right. you cannot see until you're up over the, over the white line. I've had the OT come out on that one and discuss it. I haven't seen any results yet. Can you not? Okay, it's not hurt. I thought I saw something that's temporary. You're fixing the original fence to be respect. But it'll be back. Thank you. What in the back there? I don't know if you've been doing anything about it, but coming down into Belfair, down by uh, McDonald's and stuff. I know people are not driving 35 miles an hour 
coming down that road. I have tried to pull right out on that road, and people are just barely down there. And I was driving out of Belfer one day, and there was a log truck in front of me, and people are using the turn lane as a passing lane. If there's yeah. anything you can do about that. <laughs> this is about the yeah, high speed coming down the hill, and then back to the people using the center lane as a passing lane. Um, that's a traffic enforcement issue, and we can pass that along to State Patrol and see if they can do some um, spot enforcement. We get a chunk of the revenue? <laughs> Sadly, no. Dan Walster from Great Shares. Those of you who get the Bremer and Sun know what I think about that roundabout, if you saw my letter to the editor. That is the dumbest idea I have ever heard of, and I've heard of some pippings. <laughs> Putting a roundabout in a, in a straight stretch of a state highway, 50 miles an hour speed limit. You've got to be kidding me. Well, you know what you've been hearing But as I listen to this discussion tonight, much of what I hear about downtown welfare traffic is caused by the DOT putting the cart before the horse. Right. Yep. If they had put that damn bypass in, like Ken Buskirk and I pleaded with them to do, years ago, you wouldn't even be talking about these left-hand turns. You'd have much of your through traffic at quitting time and starting time getting out of here. But no, they had to have this down... I, I told them it was a Belfair beautification project. I'm sure there was other aims there to get back to that turn. But we were up at a meeting just to show you how the DOT operates. And I don't know if there's any of them here. But I, the last meeting I was to, we were pleading with them to put the bypass in before they tied up all their traffic. And one of the DOT guys gets up and he says, the DOT does not believe that a bypass will eliminate the traffic problems in downtown Belfair. We do not agree that we should do this at this time, put it in the bypass. Okay, you know what that told me? The DOT don't want it. The DOT isn't down at the, at the legislature pleading for funds. It ain't going to happen. And it didn't happen. And this is what you have as a result of their advantages. And, and somebody said something about they got this roundabout all decided. You said that. I believe it's true. Please, no those, those round those fight pass meetings were nothing but a charade. Yeah. And it wasn't even a very good charade. It was a you know, stunk. Their presentation was stunk. I guess I'm bad I say. Thank you. Hey, uh, one of the ideas that we came up with with TipCap was to have a state representative at our meetings and I don't know what you think of that idea in the future meetings, but I thought because it's so closely knitted with, with, with intersection safety that maybe the next year when we have this meeting that we have a, a state rush uh, representative. I, I just was kind of curious what you guys think of that idea. Yeah, you should. I, I think you want to see it there's two groups that should be involved. Washdot should be involved. And, and where's our public safety people? Where's our sheriff's office? Why aren't they here? We had a we had a enforcement issue just a moment ago. Um, well, the, the reason you're here is transportation improvement. So we want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly with things and well, one, one, you know, advisory panel reports uh, makes recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners, and it's just one of many steps in the process of addressing roads and safety and public safety issues. So that's that's why we're here. Well, and one of the things that we're doing as a committee, and we're just getting into this, is Dave Smith traffic engineers providing us with, with intersection data, so we have data on 
uh, how all these intersections, how many accidents, all this other stuff. We haven't got into it yet, but also one of the ideas we did have was to invite the school district, invite the fire district, invite the police department, you know, the sheriff's department, and try to get maybe that whole that whole everyone that's involved to come. But like I said, you know, we're we're trying to get it right. We're we're working on it. So that's just ideas that we talked about as a community. Back here. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, a quick way for like the McDonald's problem is like when you're coming from the high school down to the corner of South or South Shore, they have those little speed things that slow you down, that kind of make you slow down. If you did that at McDonald's, that would slow the people down. Nobody wants to drive over them at 50 miles an hour. Thank you. Again, I, apologize. I, I missed a few key points that I wanted to uh, talk to, but I did want to bring up the, uh, the notion that this roundabout has been in discussions for quite a few years because uh, under uh, Wazdot's own analysis of uh, State Route 106, State Route 300, and State Route 3, on the Lake Flora to Allen uh, assessment that was published in 2016, it specifically states MTA is working on a roundabout at Log Yard Road. Doesn't state that MTA or the county is working on an intersection control an analysis report. They're not doing a, uh, a signal warrant study. It's just they're working on a roundabout. I mean, that's very clear that that was the end of 2016. <coughs> but moving forward, I forgot to mention one huge aspect of this roundabout or signal light However, the analyst comes out, the accurate facts are shown. One of the biggest things here is that we need to look at the cost factor, the real cost factor of our tax dollars at work. If we go and build something today and then we're ripping it out two years from now because it might be the connecting point of the bypass, um, we just wasted funds. The other thing is, is the landowners up there spent a lot of money improving the intersections already and none of this has even been talked about. Do you know that there already are signal controls at Log Yard Road? They were, they were privately installed. They're not complete, but they're, the process is there. So the private investment fund might not even be, have additional resources to help spend other than just tax revenues, but that has never been, that's never been discussed. So looking at the cost saving factor, I can tell you eliminating one mile of the bypass and having a right on, right off at Lake Flora Road Hey, they can go up to the airport and turn around and come back down to Belfair. Or you can go down to the roundabout or street light at Log Yard Road, turn around and exit off onto Log Yard Road. We just save one intersection and a mile or a mile and a half of bypass. I don't know how many millions of dollars that is, but it sounds like a lot. So that's just the food for thought. Can I say the back? Yeah, I just, I just wanted to throw something out. Jack said something that I spurred my memory. I think it would be beneficial if a level of service were established for the county roads to use in your prioritization of, of future projects. There's a, an A being the best and an F being the worst, of course. And I don't know that they've ever been established for the county roads. At least, I think um, that was something the consultant suggested in the comprehensive plan update last year was that those levels of service be established. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, they're on the side. So, MTA, that's me. Um, so, I'm Kathy Geisen from Mason Transit, and I get the pleasure of saying that I have not been working on this project. Our general manager has, who's not here today. I have her cards, I have comment cards. We'll get everything that Loretta's writing down, and she, and she will get that. Um, I talked to her today more to try and get more information in case we got more questions about this project because I've been doing this for three months and I don't know a lot about the project. And basically she really said to me, just please let everyone know that if there's any questions about any kind of intersection or control there, there has been no decisions made. We'll be having more meetings, the next of which will be in mid-April. And everybody should know about that. We put that out to the boys. We get all that information out to the public, just like the last one. Um, so, and I also have 
things over here, the, the little comment things, and I would love it if everybody would write their name down, everyone that spoke, and their phone number, so she has an opportunity to get back to them, so that the consultants have an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one discussions. That's what their job is, and that's what they're getting paid to do. So they are supposed to be out there doing that outreach. It helps a lot if we have people's names and phone numbers so that we can reach out to them and talk to them about their specific, you know, their specific concerns and questions. Um, so that's why I'm here today, just to at least tell you that, that there's no, been, no, no decisions have been made. And if, if you want us to get back to you and you, and you want to talk about it and you want to get to our consultants and you want them to hear you, then getting your name and phone number and contact information would be super helpful. So I'll be here after this gets done, and I would love it if I could get that from you, or at least take one of our little comment card documents here and a card to, from the person that's working on the project and, and get back to them and, and just pick up the phone and have a conversation or email and with everything that you've said tonight. And we'll get this too. So they will know. Our consultants will get this. Um, all the information that we're taking in tonight and all the comments that we're hearing. So. You know, you may notice I'm looking at you skeptically. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the reason is because I have a long memory. Uh -huh. And I go back to the bypass meetings. They acted like, prior to that last time when that guy let it slip, that the, that the DOT opposed the Belfair bypass, they looked us in the eye and said, we want your comments. We want to know where you want this thing to come off the highway, mm -hmm. and where you want it to intersect down by the school. DOT? Are you talking and, about and, WASHDOT? And, and, yeah. Or us? WASHDOT? I don't know who Wash, it was. Probably WASHDOT. But it would keep yeah, you it's in a charge WASHDOT thing, yeah. of building roads. Well, I mean, do, it's and you're in charge of building roads, and they were. Yeah. So when I see somebody tell me that no decision been made, I go back in my mind to when they were faking me out. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Now you know where I come from. See, I'm an old guy. I've got a good memory, and I've been through the, the mill a number of times. Yeah. And so when I hear the tone of the city, and, and I wouldn't mind if they just said, right up front, first meeting, we oppose this. Mm -hmm. Then I'd know where we're at. Right. If they led us to believe that we were laying out the groundwork for this bypass, all the intricacies that are going to be involved. And it would all be us. Yeah. Yeah, I live in Union. I've been following all that, too, as a citizen. Okay. Um, so I, I'm done. you probably have a better memory than me, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I didn't get your name again. Kathy. Kathy. Okay. Yeah. What is the manager's name? Danette Brennan. And I have her cards here and the comment okay. cards. And, and she wants to hear from everybody. And, and that will then get straight to our consultants as well. And I don't want to keep going on this one point, but Ken brought up the point of using the railroad, but wouldn't MTA be a good partner if you had a transit running down the railroad track? That's what I was saying. So, anyway. The Navy will then be on that. Don? Don? I'd like to compliment you guys for being on the TIP CAP committee. For the other people in the room, Nothing happens in the county for roads or road improvements or anything else without going through the TIP CAP committee. These people are volunteering their time and they're working hard and they deserve our respect. Thank you very much for coming up here tonight. Sounds like a good way to close, but I know this one well, has not. Died. I'm just going to say something, too. I have a question, and I want to say something positive. Um, I live on Trails Road, which everybody kept calling Trails End Road, and two ambulances couldn't find me a few years ago when I had a, a, a small stroke. So, a TIA. Um, so, I love the big uh, orange signs. <laughs> I, don't, I guess they're probably the state responsible for them, but I think that's a huge asset, both for intersection safety but also for knowledge of where the roads are because the fire station up above me nor the one out here on Old Belfair Highway, they they were both looking for trails and road and up going around the lake and um, they right. couldn't find me. So I, I'm happy for the signage, I think that's really important. And my question, so that's a statement and I give you the same kudos that gentleman did. Anytime people are volunteering and putting um, groups like this together and meeting monthly and, and you know, have, carrying our voices to the people who can make the difference, I, I applaud you as well. But my question is, one of you said, 
Well, we can talk about this when we meet again next year. Do we only get to meet once a year? I mean, I'm getting older and maybe I'm just impatient. But <laughs> what, it seems like these are a lot of issues. You people have a lot of, well, you have a lot of information. I'm relatively new here, but can, can we not meet more than once a year? Well, first of all, we, we will, we're trying to get three meetings countywide this year. That's the first for us. So, so what can we do to help you? Okay, um, so I'll explain that. The other thing is, the TIPCAP committee meets, as Jack was saying, once a month on the uh, uh, second Wednesday of each month down at the uh, Public Works building in Shelton, uh, out there on Highway 101. And uh, again, you know, if you have questions or, or things you looking at projects or safety issues, there shouldn't be no hesitation to contact either somebody go to the website, you can see members, you can look us up, or go to uh, Loretta Swanson, or even you know, to your commissioner. And just, so they'll push it back down and, and say, okay, let's start to look at this. Because we've heard, we've heard of a few around the county, like what was brought up a while back with the Berman Road. Uh, that's a long time coming out before ever, anything ever happens out there. But, it's, but we are considering looking at different projects. There's ones in the UGAs, they're more urban oriented, there's ones in the surrounding more rural type. So we'll be looking at it all. And first of all, we just need, we have a lot of input ourselves, but we also need the rest of the community feeding us their concerns like tonight. And we're gonna, it's our major step just to hold three of these meetings each year so that we keep, you know, from hopefully more and more people getting input. Likewise, we also have to, as any organization, have to carry out, we have a review process of different things, like projects we have to be through, I think it's like either uh, August or September, going down through what's gonna be for the next annual uh, tip, and then also for the next six year tip. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a working committee, and not to mention presentations like that tonight, and hopefully better the next meeting. So um, we'll take, take anything and everything as far as input that helps us better serve, you know, the citizens of the community, so. One thing is, is we've got the meeting scheduled early in the year because come October then the, the is when everything has to be approved. So, so what we're working on now will go into the one, the annual and the six year, and then, and then we start getting into budgets, and then making all we do is make recommendations. But then, come October, it goes to the commission, and they have to start putting uh, and accepting dollar amounts. And so then we, our meetings are open to the public. So anytime anyone wants to to come, we'll try to get you right in and out if you want to make a comment and. And uh, so, otherwise, uh, this will be hopefully something we do every year this time. One more. Yeah, I, I know you've been. Who was the person that identified that, that the roundabout was not a decision that's already been made? One of, one of you said that. That was me. Huh? That was me. Yeah. Did, did you attend the March 7th meeting? No. And my boss Let me said. just tell you, I bet there isn't one person in here who attended that, who attended that March 7th mm -hmm. meeting and didn't walk out of there knowing that that damn roundabout was going in the log yard going to come out of our water. Mm -hmm. and you correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't feel that way. Huh? I didn't feel that way. You're about the only one there. I didn't. Oh. I'm not the only one. Well, we can do a show of hands if you'd like. Yeah. None of the businesses were even contacted for that process. We got, we're going to have two public comment meetings and that's it. So why weren't any of the actual businesses that are the tax revenue base for this North Mason area, which is probably the fastest growing in the entire county, not even communicated or talked to? There's a serious problem with transparency here, and I don't trust either the process at this point, and neither do the landowners that we have communicated with, but it will, that process will be coming to fruition shortly.
Did you think that was already a decision made? Uh, it, from the statistics, it couldn't be answered, like traffic counts, 20-year yeah. plans, 15-year plans, and they're all wrong. It tells me that there is either they don't live here. Uh, there is either a flaw in the system that they are gathering their information from, or there is an agenda potentially that is already in process to be made. I just want what's the most practical for the community and the safety of the citizens and, and then also the best thing for our, our, our businesses. Citizen safety, commuter safety, and the commercial truck traffic that's on there that really is the hub and core of the North Mason industry needs to be the number one priority. Here, here. Well, that. Uh, Does anyone else have any more? <laughs> Do you? This is not like we're hearing any others. Again, remember. We're a citizen's advisory committee. We volunteer time. We're trying to, we're oriented more towards the county, in fact, entirely to the county. Obviously, we bump into the state issues. But, you know, you got 620 miles of road here. You got 3,000, 300 culverts. I mean, that's a lot of assets. The new tax dollars have gone through. This committee is, you know, charged with that, helping to help prioritize and, and uh, address those. Um, and, uh, Hopefully, keep up the you know the condition and the maintenance and all that of, of that you know asset. So, remembering that that's our focus. So, so well, I appreciate all the comments, the questions, and statements that were made tonight. Um, it at least keeps it focused in our mind when we bump up with the good areas. What areas are you know triggering people's thoughts and not, you know and concerns. So anyway. Uh, we're closing the meeting there. All right. I, I just want to make it.